Hello, welcome to Adrian Nix Design. Today we're going to be talking about lights and shadows, how to create that faux three-dimensional space with two-dimensional objects. Um, I'm going to start by kind of showing you light sources. Um, right now I have a window and I'm going to create some light coming through the window. Um, what I've already done here is I put in, I'm going to just uh, click, click on a few things here. Um, I've already kind of put in a kind of like a ground level and a wall level with a shadow there. Um, it's a little intense, but for demonstration purposes, this is going to be fine. Um, I'm, I put in a table, I put in a vase, I put in a bowl. I'm going to talk about light and shadow and how these things all work. And I also put in a window. Now, when I'm putting the light, I already have the light source here, but I'm going to show you how I made it. Um, you need to think about what other things are happening in the room. Like, is there a picture outside? I'm meaning a picture like, is can I see outside? Can I see um, a landscape or something where the light is coming from one direction or another. I'm kind of making up the light source in this situation, um, but I'm going to make it so that it's affecting everything else in the scene. So that's the light I'm going to be making. Um, you can have different types of air things that would bring in a light source. Like here, I, here's one where I did a lamp light, right? A lamp light coming from there. And then um, another one where I played around with like a wall sconce. That one's kind of uh, minimal. Now, and also my, my wall is lighter. If my wall was darker, that would affect everything else in the room in a very different way. Um, but I just wanted to express those things before I begin. Okay, here's my window. I'm going to make my light source. I'm going to have my light streaming through. I'm going to go and create a new layer. Um, this is going to be my window light. Um, when you, In a project like this, when you have a bunch of different layers and adjustment layers and uh, layer styles and stuff, it's very helpful to name them. I'm also grouping them. I created a folder down here. Um, these are my different light options, and I slid those layers into that folder so that I could collapse that. So I have less more real estate on my layers panel and on my screen. All right, I'm working on the window light. Um, directional light usually has some, some directional light will have some obvious lines to it, right? Whether or not they're sharp is going to be up to you and how you're adding it. But I'm just going to, I'm just kind of going in and I'm saying I want the light to stream in the window on, in this direction. And I want to make sure I'm filling up that whole direction, that whole, that whole selection with light. Um, I'm going to switch to white, right? This is default down in the corner. This is default black and white. And then I can switch the arrow above it. Um, I'm going to switch to white. I'm going to take my gradient tool and and then up inside my gradient panel, um, if I click on that to have the gradient editor, if I go into my basics, which is the first option, it will oh, the first one will always be foreground to background. The second will be foreground to transparency. So that's the one I want there. And this is if my light, now this is my light being mostly white, but it could be tinted blue or tinted yellow. That, this color could be whatever you want this color to be. And I'm taking my gradient tool and I'm going to go ahead and slide it in and drop that in that space. Now let me get rid of my selection because that's a very short sharp line on the edges of that reflect that light that light that's streaming in so likely that would be a little bit lighter on the edges a little more blurred out so I'm going to go to filter blur and I'm going to choose the Gaussian blur I just love that Gaussian blur because it's kind of just nice and soft it's going to soften up the edges a little bit I mean how how you know you've seen light coming through the window is it very strong is it very light um, the nice part about all these different layers and things is that it's completely editable um, as you keep working with it. So let's say that my light is coming in that way. Um, I can go ahead and I can experiment with the opacity on my light if it's too intense or if I want it to be more intense. I can try putting a blending mode on it. Maybe that looks even more realistic. You can experiment with a lot of those things when you put those on their own layers. All right, so if the light is coming from here, I want to talk about what's happening with the items that are in my piece as well, right? Let me zoom in a little bit on these items. So if the light is coming on the right, then the shadow on the items on the table should be on the left. Um, look at the table itself. The table itself has light on the right and it's dark. It's not darker, but it's like slightly darker on the left. Um, I'm, I'm on the right. I'm going to flip it, right? I'm going to hold shift so that I'm not constraining my proportions and I want to flip this. I can always go to edit, transform, flip horizontal as well, but I like kind of like this key keyboard shortcut so I can experiment with um, kind of turning it the way I want. So now that makes more sense, right? The light of the table is nearer to the light by the window. The light on this object right here is on the right, closer to the window. This one is also wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this one. 
And then in a piece like this where you're creating a montage, a collage, you have to look at proportions, right? Look how big this bowl, this bowl's too big. So I'm going to shrink it down as well, right? Look at, I, you know, sometimes you can look at like, look at the size of the pear in comparison to the leaves of the plant. That should be kind of helpful in helping you determine what should be light and what should be dark. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shadow on these items on the table and a shadow for the table itself onto the floor. But before I do that even, um, one of the tools that I like to use in this situation before I do that is the burn tool. So the burn tool, uh, old school photography working in the dark room, right? Burn makes light areas of the image darker. Dodge makes light uh, dark areas of the image lighter. That's it, right? So let's go to the burn tool. I'm using the brackets on the keyboard next to the letter P to make my brush bigger and smaller. You definitely want when it comes to burning or dodging a soft I can go all the way soft, a soft brush with soft edges, not a hard edge thing. And I'm just going to kind of make sure I'm on the, you know, am I on the right layer? Okay, I'm on the right layer. And I'm just going to do a swipe here, right? Just do a light, gentle swipe. And look how I just kind of made that a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more realistic with the light in here. I can also go to my table layer, right? The table definitely could use a little darkening as well. Now, you can't get crazy with the burn tool because you're almost like you're playing around with the sharpening of it and it could really start to edit your piece in, a, in an odd way. So you don't want to be too aggressive with it. But um, kind of adding a little bit of the shadow to that makes it just look a little more realistic. What about this? These legs of the table, let's go into like foreground and background, are behind. They should be darker, right? What if I darken them up just a tad bit? They should be darker because they're underneath the table, right? That looks pretty good. All right, creating the shadows. If I'm on the table, I there's a two different there's several ways you can do this, but I like to create my FX, my my drop shadow. I'm gonna double click in my layer or click on the FX in the layers panel. Click, click, there we are. And I'm gonna go drop shadow, right? Because I want to edit my drop shadow, I've gone opacity all the way up. I don't want the spread and the size because I can edit those later, and the distance doesn't really matter either. I just want a nice dark shadow, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, the table's a little bit funky, right? Right now, this is a drop shadow, and it's attached to the table. It's a drop shadow. It looks like it's in front of the picture, not in the picture. So I need to separate the shadow from the layer. I'm going to go to Layer. I'm going to Layer Style, and I'm choosing Create Layer. That's going to separate my shadow from my table. So now my shadow layer is completely completely editable. I'm going to hold shift and kind of smash it onto the ground. This would make sense if the shadow, if like the light was coming from the front and pushing back, but that's not the case here. The light is coming from the right. Um, and it, so the shadow for this table would actually be in front of the table. So here I am again, I'm holding shift so I can experiment with the proportions of it because the proportions might not be right on. Now this gets a little complicated because legs, especially with a table need to line up. But the nice part about this being in its own layer is that I can use my eraser tool and I can edit the shadow any way I want. I can increase the opacity, or I mean, sorry, lower the opacity on it. I can put a blur on it. There's a lot of different things that I can do to that shadow there. It's off still, right? It's still not making sense. Um, let me try this. Edit, transform, skew. I want to take that shadow and pull it to the right, right? Because if the light is coming from the top right, I want that shadow to kind of go to the left. So eh, maybe that might, I might have to go in there. Now, another good part about this being in its own layer is that I can draw my own shadow in here. Let's go to black, right? I Let's turn the opacity all the way back up again where it was, where it was really black. And I've got my brush tool here. I can go a little bit soft, maybe a little bit soft. And I can go and I can kind of brush in. I'm sorry, oh, what am I doing here? I got black, I got my paintbrush, not my eraser tool. And I want to kind of brush it in a little bit and kind of attach, attach it, right? Um, after I do that, I can play around with the opacity and I can blur the edges of it. You can also, um, if you soften the brush up, you can draw your own shadow in here. I'm going to do it on the same layer because there would be slightly darker here underneath the table as well. All right, I can add a lot of shadow there. Now, if I lower the opacity here, I can see through it or I can do filter, blur, and put that Gaussian blur on there. The nice part, again, about this being in its own layer is if it's too aggressive, you can go in and you can erase part of the shadow with your eraser tool. I've got a soft brush here. Let's go all the way soft. And let's go ahead and lower the opacity so that I can almost kind of swipe a little bit. I like this kind of like sweeping, swiping movement to kind of show you where shadows and highlights are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put 
I'm going to work on the shadows for these two items right here. Because both of these items are on the table, I want to create a shadow for both of the items at the same time. I'm going to put them onto a layer together. I'm going to go to my layers panel. I held shift, by the way, right? You can either uh, hold shift to click on both of them to, you know, select both of those layers together, or um, you can do it in the layers panel, right? You can hold shift, add another one, hold shift. I'm going to merge these two layers together. There we go. Now they're one. And I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm, let's put the FX on there. I'm going to put the drop shadow. I'm not even going to edit it. No, no editing there. Separate it, layer, layer style, create layer, separate it from the object itself. And now I can take this shadow. This shadow is going to be a lot easier. I'm going to take this shadow. I'm going to push it down in front of them, right? Because it's going to be on the table. Oops. Take this shadow, I'm going to push it down in front of them. I, what happened there is I let go of shift. I let go of the mouse before I let go of shift. And then what I want to do is I'm going to do this edit, transform, and I want to skew it. I want to push it off to the side a little bit, right? So I'm going in the opposite direction of the window that's there. And then now these ones are a little bit easier to line up so that that's going to work. Now, these shadows are way too dark, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity here. Um, maybe the shadow also needs to be a little bit more blurred, so I'm going to go into the blur, and let's play with that Gaussian blur again. I, I do want it to be a little bit sharper. The closer something is to another item, the sharper that shadow will be. So where this can be kind of like the, the table on the ground shadow can be real furry, this one should not, right? Because the, it's right there. It's right there on top of it. Um, so it's going to be a lot harsher of a shadow. Um, I'm going to take my eraser tool now, though, and I'm going to erase from this whole side of the table because you would not be able to see the shadow if it went over that side of the table. And I happen to be using, again, that soft brush with the lowered opacity. Here I am kind of erasing in this space right here because I want to have a, a soft edge to it. And you almost want that gradient to get a little bit darker as it's getting towards the end of the table because there will be a little bit more light hitting it there. After that, you can zoom in and you can use your eraser tool and kind of clean up some other little things in here. I'm going to turn my um, my sharpness up. I'm going to play around with my opacity and I'm going to turn that up. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, make sure that I have cleaned up the selection. Right. I would definitely want to make sure that that selection is cleaned up and ready to go. Um, that's going to make it look that much more realistic. And if I want it to get a little bit darker, I can go to the table layer and I can take that burn tool too. I can go in there and I can say, okay, on the table, I want it to get much darker right where this object is, right? Just to kind of beef up the, the, the shadow there a little bit. Let's go to the, um, the object, the bowls themselves. Let's, let's beef up the, the, the burning there. And if you can kind of get the illusion of depth, you've really created something special. So thank you for watching and um, please subscribe to see more cool effects and things that you can do with Photoshop.